So we've talked about the box and whisker plots in class. And in that, we've also talked about the idea of this outlier test. So sometimes in a data set, we want to look at what's being presented to us. And we want to see if there's an, un an unusual point. So as you guys look at this data set, 2, 4, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, 11, 13, 14, and then 41. That 41 probably sits a little uneasy with us. It, it doesn't make sense. 41, just it's a huge jump. So we want to test the data to see if there's an outlier. As you guys move forward in your mathematics, you'll learn some cool things about outliers um, in that if there is an outlier in the data set, we want to use a different central tendency or measurement. Instead of the mean, we would use the median value. If it doesn't have an outlier, then it's okay to go ahead and use the mean value. And so those are really cool little things that we can learn about and how the world around us is, uses all of this data and this, and this verbiage that they use. Why do they say the median versus the mean? Well, if there's an outlier, that's, that's when they'll make that distinction. So we want to learn how to run the outlier test. So the very first thing that you always want to make sure of in a box and whisker plot or anything like that is that your data is listed in numerical order least to greatest. And I've already gone ahead and done that for us so that we don't have to waste our time doing that. The next thing what we want to do is we want to find our five number system. So I'm going to write that down for you guys. It's the five number system. And in that five number system, here's what we have. We have our minimum value. We have our Q1, our median our Q3, and our maximum value. Now, the minimum and maximum are really easy. The minimum value in this one is 2, and the maximum value is 41. And those are pretty easy uh, to do. You just look at the numerical uh, data set from least to greatest, and it's the first number and the last number. Q1, Q3, and the median are a little bit tougher. we got to do our little counting and stuff like that. So I've gone ahead and given us a pretty easy data set to work with here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 numbers. So my little trick, if you remember, go 11 divided by 2, and that is 5.5, round up to 6. 1, 2, three, four, five, six. That is the median. And you can check it by going one, two, three, four, five on that side and one, two, three, four, five on that side. Okay. The other technique that's out there, guys, remember, is you can just start counseling off from the sides. But as these data sets get larger, this is a cute little trick that you guys can use. Okay. So there's the median. The median is nine. Now we want to go ahead and split the data set. So you have your, your lower part of your data set or your lower half and then your upper half. Now we want to break that in half. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five. Pretty easy to see, guys, that it's two and two. And then there's the third term, or one, two, three, one, two on both sides. If you want to use the cute little trick, you go five divided by two. That's 2.5. Round up to three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Q1 is 4, Q3 is 13. So now we have all of our information that we need. We have our five number system, and now we can move on. If I were to do the box and whisker, I'm pretty much done at this point. I can go ahead and plot all my points and stuff like that. But today's lesson is more about the outlier test and how we can do that. So for the outlier test, the next thing that we need to look at is what we call the IQR. Now this stands for the inner quartile, because we just broke this up into fours range. This is the inner quartile range. The other way you guys can look at this, this is the box. So in the box and whisker, this is the box. Well, how do we make the box? We make it between Q3 and Q1. So the inner quartile range, similar to the range of the data set, you take Q3, or the larger number, and subtract Q1, the smaller number. Well, we've already found those values. Q3 is 13, and Q1 is 4. So what is 13 minus 4? Well, I don't want to do too much math in my head right now. So I'm going to utilize my technology, and 13 minus 4 is 9. Now, of course, guys, we know what 13 minus 4 is, but I want you to be encouraged to use your, your calculator whenever you can. So that is our IQR, beautiful number, 9. That is the size of the box. Okay, That's, that's the length of the box. But with the IQR and with the outlier test, there's another step. If you guys remember, we have this magical number of we need to multiply by 1.5. So we need to take the number 9, and we need to multiply by 1.5. So I'm going to pull 9 times 1.5, pull my calculator again, and I get 13.5 or 13.5. So this is 13.5. 
Okay, So this becomes a very important number to us. What we are going to do with 13.5 is we are going to go ahead and add it to Q3, and we're going to subtract from Q1. And what we're doing is, and I'll draw you guys a quick little picture here. What we're doing is, is in the box and whisker uh, plot, okay, so here's like a standard box and whisker plot. What we're doing is, we want to take this magic number of 13.5 that we just did all this work with, okay? We found the, the length of this, we multiplied it by a factor of 1.5, okay? That means I want to take this and multiply it by 1.5, or add 50% of itself back on. Okay? And the reason we're doing that is because we want to extend the box about 50% this way and then 50% this way. And we want to ask ourselves is now with this new imaginary field, are there any values of the data that lay outside that? If they are, that's what we will call an outlier. So with this magical number of 13.5, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take Q3, which we already know is 13. Okay, so we're going to take Q3, and we're going to add 13.5. So that's going to be 13 plus 13.5, and that's going to equal 26.5. So that right there becomes the upper boundary. As you guys get further in math, you guys will call that a, like a limit, but boundary is perfect. We call them boundary points as well. So we're going to call that the upper boundary because it's the, the, the boundary from here higher. So that's the highest value that is allowed in this data set. And then we're going to subtract it from Q1. So we want to start with Q1, and then we want to subtract 13.5. Well, Q1 in this problem, if you remember back up top, was 4. So 4 minus 13.5. A little bit tougher to do that sometimes. So let's go ahead and see how magic the calculator is. Oh, look at that. It gives me negative 9.5. Beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and write negative 9.5. That right there becomes my lower boundary or my lower limit. I cannot go any further than that. That would be this point down here. So now I want to take these two numbers of 26.5 and negative 9.5. And I want to go back up to my data set. So I have negative 9.5 on the lower half, and I have 26.5 on the upper half. So what I want to ask myself is, are there any numbers within this data set that lay outside of that? Well, obviously, my smallest number is 2, so there's nothing down here. But what about this 41? It's bigger than 26.5. That right there becomes my outlier, and I label it as such. So that is how you find an outlier given a statistical data set. Make sure it's in numerical order, find your five number system, and then do all of your IQR and then the times 1.5. Uh, make sure you guys study this a little bit and have fun with it. Uh, anytime you look at a data set, you can now start to play with these things and gain a lot more knowledge about the data set that you're looking at. If you have any questions, make sure you come on in and see me.